Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be going through all Gold Lewis tech, all the major pieces of tech anyway, and I structured it in such a way as to be ordered so that the earlier things I go over in the video are probably the more relevant pieces of tech overall. But yeah, Gold Lewis has a ton of tech, and this is honestly only like the main concepts, I would say, just the building blocks. You can do so many creative things with this character, more than any other character in the game, easily in my opinion. So that being said, let's get going because this is probably going to be a long one. So first up, I wanted to do a section on car canceling. When we say car canceling in this game, we are referring to a dash cancel, or sometimes some characters can cara with normals. But on Gold Lewis, that is the art of dash canceling your, your close slash or your 5k. And then during those initial frames for the dash cancel, you input a special in order to get a little bit of extra forward momentum. It looks like this, as opposed to this. This, as opposed to this. So, car canceling has a ton of utility on Gold Lewis. I'm not going to get too deep onto exactly why you want to do this. The gist of it is that you'll be closer, you will generally have better frame data, and you generally will play better around the opponent's defensive options by car canceling. It's just a very advisable thing to do on Gold Lewis. You essentially always want to be doing this off of close slash and 5k. I would say it's much better than not doing so. So the way you perform a car cancel, the way I like to do it, is you press S or K, depending on what you're canceling, and then dash, and kind of as you're pressing the dash button, you're going to be doing your behemoth motion. And the timing on this is actually pretty forgiving, okay? Now there's also different types of car canceling. As far as I understand it, you can get a car cancel on frame one, two, or three of your dash. And depending on which one of those you get, you can get different properties you know, on the resulting move, on the resulting cancel. And that's kind of important to know. A later car cancel can be important in some cases. It can allow you to leave a non-mashable window, but stay closer and whatnot. But generally, it doesn't matter too, too much as long as you're actually hitting the car cancel. So the way you do this, like I said, is you press dash, after S and then start doing your behemoth motion kind of as you're pressing dash. That's the best way that I can describe it. And you can get 100% consistent at this. It's something that has a little bit weirder timing on 5k I would say, but is overall the same. And it's just really, really important on Gold Lewis specifically. All characters can do this, but Gold Lewis is the only one where it's like an essential part of doing pressure with him. It'll cover your, you know, options in many different spots where you might not be able to otherwise like this for example becomes much harder to backdash if you do it on car cancel whereas if you don't car cancel it's very easy for the opponent to backdash that you know that kind of thing the merits for, for car canceling are too long to mention here i have a separate video on car canceling but it's something that is sort of the first fundamental piece of playing gold lewis and developing tech with him i would say so yeah uh, if you want to learn how to practice car canceling i would suggest that you just Set the opponent to normal block and just make sure that you can car cancel every behemoth, you know, on demand. And, you know, you're going to mess this up here and there, but as long as you're very consistent with this and uh, you will get that way if you just play Gold Lewis over time, it's not going to really be a problem in those rare instances uh, where you drop it, you know. It's also quite useful in combos, by the way, so I'll show you a quick example. Let's look at the close slash combo. Right here, car cancel to get this 248. It makes it a lot easier. And there's your full combo. Right, so let's move on. So this isn't exactly tech, but it's something that is definitely worth understanding with Gold Lewis. Let's talk a little bit about safe jumps for a second. So this character kind of gets you know, very much wrecked by DPs in the sense that it can seriously mess up his offensive structure and what he wants to do, even though it is, of course, risky for the opponent. It's still something that is very important to be mindful of and understand how to play against and so you kind of want to know how to safe jump wherever you can and that's actually a lot easier said than done with this character because pretty much all of his safe jumps outside of really really specific scenarios are manually timed because there is so much variation in not only how plus you'll be on knockdown but also the distances you'll be at with the same amount of plus frames on your knockdown, for example. Safe jumping from here is not the same as safe jumping from here, even though I did the exact same knockdown 
you kind of have to adjust your spacing and your timing depending on that sort of thing. And so um, I'd say that happens a lot more than many other characters, but as a result, you also get many more opportunities to safe jump than other characters because you have so many hard knockdowns. All the behemoths are hard knockdowns, right? But that being said, uh, it's kind of important to understand some setups, I guess. Off of throw, you can do with 5P into IDJD. That is a frame kill. You can also, of course, um, kind of wait until you get to the apex of your jump and JD. And if you delay that a little bit with a forward jump, you can get a sort of left-right mix-up, if you will. Now, Goldless is pretty weak to being execution checked by backdash on his safe jump. So that is something to be really aware of, okay? And it's going to be important to develop your ability to OS safe jumps uh, with Goldless. But something that is important to note is that it is extremely, extremely high execution with Goldless to OS his safe jumps with normals and react and hit confirm off of those OSs. Because there are some characters with backdashes and the way that Goldless's frame data works with his low jump arc and, and the frame data on his JH, their backdashes are so good, they go so far so quickly that you can really only OS with like a 5P, for example. Like I'm talking about Bridget. In this case, there are a few other characters that have similar sorts of things. And to react and confirm that 5P into a BT while also not being vulnerable to DPs or reversals uh, and also meeting with your safe jump all at the same time is quite, quite difficult, which is why I think it comes into uh, kind of the topic of tech, I would say. It's important to be aware of that and not just understand that you can always just safe jump really nearly with gold blows. But yeah. Once you get used to it, it's not too, too bad. There are kind of a few different um, schools of thought for this, like as to how people do it. Some people wait till they start getting up and then will like do an IED. Some people uh, will wait in the air. And then once they see them start getting up, they'll IED. You know, there are a few different ways of doing this, but I will guarantee you that you will not ever get 100% consistent at this, at all spacings. It is just, it's, it's too difficult to cover all your bases with Gold Lewis, in my opinion with the amount of variation that he has on this. Uh, that is to say, to OS everything correctly and to block reversals and correctly time your safe jumps to be meaty every time. It's just not 100% realistic on him, in my opinion, and I think that uh, most people don't understand just how much you can get away with throwing a wrench in his offense as a DP character by RPSing with Backdash um, on Wake Up because of how hard it is to OS simultaneously. Now that's where the next piece of tech comes in, and that is the safe jab. Now, Goldless's jab on hit, plus, of course, but more importantly, on block, it's also plus. It is plus three. It has several active frames as well, right? Three active frames. So that means that we can safely meaty with this, because it's only six recovery as well, and all DPs are nine frame startup um, at the earliest. And so if you time it correctly, you can both meaty with 2P and block reversals. Now, this can also be backdashed, of course, but because you're only in six rec uh, six recovery, you can punish that essentially every time. You just have to react to the opponent backdashing. You can basically OS it as well uh, with pressing S, like delay S after a safe jab, because if you meaty correctly with safe jab, because it's three active and plus three, you can be plus five or six, and so close slash is pretty much going to be guaranteed there. You'll often space yourself outside of throw range too, just by doing the, the safe jab, even on non FD. And so, uh, if the opponent backdashes, far slash will punish them. It's 11 startup. Backdashes essentially all will be at least minus 11, including the, the six frame recovery you do, as long as you're meeting on the later active frames of 2P. And that means that you can do an OS that will cover both backdash and also allow you to get pressure with safe jab. The trick is to actually meaty with safe jab and, uh, and block reversals. Again, much easier said than done. This is something that takes a lot of practice, and I'm doing it on Kai specifically here because it's easier with him. He doesn't have a, as fast of a reversal as other characters. But So there's a nice way to lab this. Set the opponent to throw or DP randomly on wake up, and keep practicing until you're meeting the throw and blocking the DP, and you're doing both of those consistently with Gold Lewis. We have a bounty in the Gold Lewis Discord called Scion of Safe Jabs. If you do this 10 times in a row against a nine frame dp character in the lab you get a special role so i definitely recommend everyone learning this who's a gold list player it's very very useful and very good 
Now, the only thing that's weak about safe jab is if the opponent FDs, you're not really in range for close slash. And then that's an RPS point because your far slash is 11 frame startup. That means there's sometimes going to be an 8 frame gap. Less than that a lot of the time, so it's still good, but it's a really good point to DP for the opponent. Again, risky, but generally we don't want to do 2P into nothing. At that point, you would rather safe jump to get better pressure because you can't just close slash after safe jump uh, gaplessly. But nonetheless, um, it's important to be aware of, and it's very important to implement as well. But it's, it is a valid execution check spot, you know, that's, that's for sure uh, against opponents. My advice would be generally that you can do it later than you think, but it's kind of annoying because you have to be aware of like the get up animation. Like right there, I'm hitting a throw. And right there, I'm safe to DP. So yeah, I think that covers everything on safe jabs. Let's move on. So now we'll talk about OTGs a little bit. OTGs are really, really good on Gold Lewis. There's a number of things you can do. But in the corner, the strongest thing I'd say that you should be aware of is, of course, 2K OTG high low. You can time these to be meaty as the opponent is waking up, and that's really good. He has the highest plus 12 minimum and the lowest plus 16. They can be backdashed, but player 2, 2k OTG, 268. And if that happens, you get a full combo. There's going to be wall damage, so uh, you often will get a wall splat there, but it's still really, really good. You're getting a big punish off of that 268, or you can just keep the corner. You know, that's also good. And not only that, um, you can actually just loop the same situation. Like this. You know, very, very good stuff. And eventually you might run into a spot where the opponent gets splatted by a single BT. You go into super off that, you're getting huge damage because the combo as the game sees it is just one BT into a super, which is going to be uh, low scaling and get you big rewards. So that's something that's very, very good against uh, non-reversal characters. Even against reversal characters, you can space things in such a way as to be safe to a lot of reversals. You just need to know how to do the running tech, but we're getting there any case, um, there's other things you can do with OTG in the corner. Drone into throw. I like to do OTG Kara drone because it will leave you closer. And, you know, that, that's a classic situation. You can also just put the drone down directly off of an OTG. Darkrai likes to do 5k, for example, and space out and see what the opponent does. If they try to jump, you can easily react with an air throw, an anti, or whatever. You can also do 2s for this, by the way. Same kind of thing, it spaces you out a little further than if you Kara off the OTG. But those are kind of the common options. So let's look at another situation where OTG is relevant in this case. And I'm talking about OTG miniguns. So let's just do a combo against Kai here. He's half HP when he starts. Right? 162. Take note of that. I'm going to do the exact same combo but with a slight alteration. With an OTG minigun, we get a fairly significant amount more. And the more the opponent has guts, and the lower they are, the more relevant that this kind of combo ender is going to be. So generally, the spot to be aware of uh, where to do OTG minigun, you need full security for it, and you want to have a low gravity 486 or 268 ender, which means you shouldn't have used those BTs earlier in the combo. Otherwise, it won't work. So I did a fairly long combo back there, but you know, I'll scale it even more to get the point across. That was giga scaled, right? But because I had the no usage of 486 basically earlier in the combo, the ender will still work. And so that can also work off of a 268 ender a lot of the time, close slash 2H268 or 2K268. It can also work sometimes depending on height and gravity. That's something you kind of have to get a feel for, but generally mid-screen where you can kill off of this compared to where you couldn't kill if you just try to end with bts it happens a lot and so you're gonna you know you're gonna want to be routing into that uh, 486 otg gun ender a lot of the time so that's something to be quite aware of with the otgs Alrighty then let's move right along to fuzzy overheads so how does a fuzzy overhead work well i'm going to set the opponent's stance to crouch here it means that they will crouch as soon as they possibly can hit a block string, but because block switching is on, if they need to block overhead, they'll block overhead. That is what I'm talking about. So the way Guard Crush works, which is kind of this, what happens whenever you hit the opponent with a BT, they get their balance kind of thrown off like that, it has special properties. One of them is that the opponent cannot change 
stances, okay? They need to come out of guard crush frames in order to go from crouching to standing or vice versa, even if they're holding in the other stance. So for example, Kai is essentially holding down back here because he's in crouch stance. He'll go back to crouch as soon as he can, but he cannot crouch because he's stuck standing. This behemoth is an overhead, right? So he has to block it standing. So because of that, if we RC during that time, we can threaten a mix-up. We can instant overhead with JK, which is around frame 14. It's unreactable. Or we can do a low. 2D is same frame. It's 14. You can also run a little bit whenever you set this up in order to make the timing a little more ambiguous and it will still fuzzy. Do 2K, 2D, do 2K behemoth, whatever. You can even do um, a running low like that. That's very reactable, but it has its own merits. It's very, very plus and gives you a full combo if it does happen to hit. The opponent can get flustered in these spots and not react properly or try to mash. But anyway, uh, because the opponent is stuck standing, we threaten the instant overhead and we get the 50-50 high-low. Now there are a lot of different ways of setting this up. Before we get to that, let's take a look at the conversions if you actually hit the fuzzy overhead. So kind of the baby conversion is going to be JK, JD, close slash 268. This is pretty good because even if the opponent blocks the JK, JD and you're not hit confirming, you're going to be gapless a lot of the time here. And this is still a good pressure sequence even on block, right? You get a, a 268, a space 268 at that. And that leaves you in a great position. And yet, in the corner, you still get a baby wall break. Like, if you want to do something extremely simple, uh, you, you still can threaten a wall break off of this. Now, if you go low, you will not be able to threaten a wall break off of the PRC fuzzy unless there's a lot of wall damage already. That's something that is important to note here. Uh, and, unless, of course, um, you hit this. You know, something like that is going to allow you to get a wall break. But a lot of the time, you won't have that option off of PRC. That's where the BRC fuzzies come in, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Now, aside from that conversion, there is another conversion that I think is a little more optimal. And that would be JKJT, post slash JHJD, land 684. This takes some practice. It's not the easiest thing, but you get a lot more space this way. It spends a little bit more time comboing the opponent, so you get, you know, uh, a better tempo on your meter regeneration and your meter penalty as well. You also have some space to drone or do whatever you, you want to do here. And of course, it's more damage as well. Or they're about the same, roughly. But the Oki is worse in the situation that I just did to get the same amount of damage. Yeah. So that would be the other option, but neither of those are actually optimal. This is what the optimal fuzzy conversion looks like. Not the easiest thing in the world, I'm not going to lie. This is something that I am still spending time implementing, but it's going to be Rising JH, Manual Delay, J248, and then pick up with Close Slash. A lot of the time, you need to micro dash the Close Slash to get it to pick up as well. And to have it combo properly into 2H can be a little tricky sometimes. But the nice thing about this, you get the wall break. It's way more damage, and you can do it from way further as well. And that's, you know, that that's really good. Even if you're not able to wall break, you can still side switch using that route. And of course, you can 2k248 for side switching as well. Let's talk setups for a second for the fuzzy overheads. So, Gold Lewis has two overhead BTs. That would be 486 and 816. That means the opponent has to block them overhead, or else they're getting hit. Go figure. So, if they block them, you can guaranteed go for the fuzzy. However, again because of the way Guard Crush works, if the opponent blocks any behemoth standing, they're stuck standing while they're in guard crush. So as long as you RC while they're in guard crush, you can threaten that 50-50, even if they did not block an overhead behemoth. And this is something that confuses a lot of opponents. They don't understand why they're getting fuzzied off of mid behemoths, okay? And that's really, really good. It means you can kind of threaten this fuzzy whenever you want. And it's pretty solid. I would say the biggest thing to keep in mind as the Gold Lewis player is that the low option is not great a lot of the time here. Is it really worth spending 50 just to knock the opponent down with a 2k behemoth and getting meter penalty? I think it's up for debate, but you know, that is something to consider if you actually want to get good damage, good value out of it. Generally, you need to threaten the overhead and mindful opponents will be aware of that. And there are some spacings where you really can't threaten the overhead. Like if I go from all the way over here, even getting the overhead is going to be pretty tricky a lot of the time. He's not set to crouch right now, by the way. So if he were, he would have gone right under that. So that's where some of the other setups that 
I have developed over time with my fellow Gold Lewis compatriots come into play. One of them, and I think this is extremely good, is going to be a close slash TKBRC. So the way I like to do this is close slash 9 dash plus RC macro. It's not that hard to input. From here, JK. And from that JK, the high option, JK, JT. Or if you want to do you know, the optimal conversion, you do what we were just looking at a minute ago. And the nice thing about this is the low option, dash 5k or dash 2k, is plus enough so that close slash will link on hit. Even if they're spaced and they FD'd for whatever reason, the, uh, you know, this close slash link here is very, very generous. I think it has something to do with the BRC slowdown. It does not look like you should get close slash all the time, and you do. And you can car into 268, and of course, even on block, then it's very good. And on hit, you can wall break off of it. So that is an excellent, excellent fuzzy, I would say, that people should be aware of. You can do this off of TK BRC as well, which means you can kind of threaten the safe jump whenever you want. This situation pops up a lot post wall break. If you broke with wild assault, for example, and you have 50 and you want to be reversal safe, cover all your bases and get a fuzzy TKBRC right here is also really, really good. And recall how JK is 14 frame startup. That means that if the opponent does not FD a 486 that is very close to them, such as if you try to meaty with it and it hits on the last few of its active frames or they stand block it, on the last few active frames, then you get the opportunity to fuzzy as well. This will not ever work if the opponent FDs. That's something to keep in mind, but you can actually react and confirm if the opponent did, of course, not FD a 486. And so a situation where Gobo likes to go for this a lot is like do a knockdown into drone, and then he'll use the plus frames of drone to, to get in there real close with 486. And for whatever reason, Opponents just like aren't FDing here a lot of the time. They might think there's a gap. There really isn't much of a gap if you do that whole string properly. That's something to keep in mind. There are also other types of BRC fuzzies that you can do. That is also a fuzzy overhead. You do close slash BRC 862. And this actually works even if you fast BRC. Again, only on FD in that case. You have to confirm if they're not FDing or not. It's a little difficult to confirm everything in that case though. For example, if this hits, you actually get a mini combo. Mid screen you get 2p684, corner you get close slash. You can hit confirm it. You can also FD confirm or non FD confirm into pressure afterward. It's just a little bit difficult to be cognizant and immediately react to all three of them. It's not that uh, it's not that easy to do, but this is very very strong. And there are other types of uh, ways that Gold Lewis can set up fuzzy overheads. Of course, like if you want to go for some shenanigans like this. There we go. I just wasn't fast enough. Th that will also work. So anytime you're plus 14 on an overhead, you can go for it. And it's something that's very, very strong and I think a little bit underutilized with Gold Lewis, especially with the BRC fuzzies. Like this one, the fact that we get a fuzzy here on no FD, very, very, very good. And that's extremely meter efficient because it is fast blue RC, but more on that later. I think that just about wraps up the fuzzy discussion. You can also do it off of this, by the way. That is back turn 842, but we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah. That's all for fuzzies, but I just want to say that particularly when it comes to this kind of thing, there are a lot of different ways that you can set it up. There's a lot of creativity to be had. There are kind of pseudo fuzzy setups. And there's all sorts of different options that you can go for. So just one more piece of epic tech that Gold Lewis has. This is just kind of a primer on fuzzies, if you will. But that said, let's move right along. Let's actually explain what I did a minute ago. This is an 842, right? Same exact animation here, and you can see the opponent blocking low. And yet, when I jump over them and cross them up and input it at the right time, it's an overhead. Now, this is referred to as a back turn in the Gold Lewis community. That's kind of the nomenclature for it, if you will. And that is essentially the art of tricking the game into thinking you're on the side that you're not facing. Low. Overhead. Exact same animation. Now, that is because the overhead is essentially this behemoth, except facing the other side. And if it hits on its last frame, it has the same exact properties as an 842. The 862 last frame is just like an 842 on the same side, right? Except it's an overhead. And that means that it will look like the low version if you're on the opposite side. And that is just really disgusting. That's a true 50-50 because you can control whether or not you want to go for 842 or back turn 842. 
Now, uh, 842 gives you a combo, of course, on hit, a little mini combo. Factor in 842 doesn't, but if you have meter, you can threaten the fuzzy off of that, as we were looking at a second ago. And what's even better, Factor in 862 is a low, but if this hits... Look what happens. Full combo. Pretty interesting, right? Back turn, 862, is really, really good. However, if this hits them crouching, you do not get the side switch. You don't get that little launch pickup, which is something to keep in mind. Which means if the opponent is actually reacting to the 862 and trying to block high, you full combo them. It's pretty funny. And again, true 50-50, the animations are identical. You can control if you want to do 862 or back turn 862 just by doing the timing. Now, the reason this is tech is because obviously it's really sick, but also uh, there's a heavy degree of manual timing for, for doing this. It's not that easy to get a back turn 100% consistently. So the way that you actually do a back turn is that you need to input your behemoth like right as you're landing, but not get an air behemoth. See that? I'm pressing H like the frame I land and having my full BT motion ready. But not not doing an air BT, right? That's how I messed up that last one. Here I'm doing it too late. I'm gonna do one now. See the difference? Right? I'm gonna call it out as I do it. Back turn. Back turn. 862. 862. Back turn. Okay. You're gonna have to study that timing if you really wanna understand how to do it properly. The, the trick is, like I said, to have your BT motion done as you're landing, but not do it so fast as to get an air BT or not doing it too slowly as to not have the BT motion registered, in which case you'll just get a 2H. Now, back turns are really, really sick. There are a ton of ways that you can set them up. There's some super saucy things that you can do in order to go into back turns. But again, we're not getting too deep into that here. These are the building blocks for you to understand what tech Gold Lewis has. I would advise anyone to ask around the gold cord. We have some sick, uh, some sick setups for it. But one of the guaranteed ways to go into a back turn is this. You get a meaty back turn in this case. Now, there's a bit of an RPS here. The opponent can backdash your back turn there but you can cover that with a back turn 248, which will also side switch. 248 will always side switch no matter what, and it will be a low, which is a really nice uh, property. You can also, of course, do a back turn 684, and 684 is overhead on the second half of its active frames, which means that this is an overhead, and again, you can threaten the fuzzy from that. <laughs> kind of nice, all the ways that Gold Lewis can interact with his own tech, and that's why the, the tree of Gold Lewis tech branches so wide, because everything interacts with everything you can set up everything off of everything and i think that's really awesome for one but yeah that's back turns and they're super super sick another spot where you can be really ambiguous about this is if you set up a drone to meaty now a lot of the time this drone won't truly be meaty but from there if the opponent is aware of back turns they're basically guessing and even then like with the drone explosion it's so hard to see what behemoth he's doing to start off with there so this is like almost unnecessary in a way but you can back turn there uh, it's just saying a lot of the time you won't really get that side swap again. You only get this if they try to stand block it. If they're crouching and they get hit by that, it won't work. But that would only happen if they were either mashing or just not blocking, right? A lot of the time uh, they will, you know, mess up and block it standing or press a standing button and then you get the combo off of it. It's really, really sick. But yeah, let's move right along. That is back turns out of the way. The basics of them at least. Hey, yo goons. Check this combo real quick. Not bad, right? But let's say you don't want to do your double Kara mid combo. Or let's say that even if you do, you're not close enough to get that sweet spot when you 1080. What then? Observe. Wow. Dash 1080. And this is our next subject, buffer storing. We're going to be talking specifically about running 1080s first here. Now, this pops up all the time to get optimal damage, uh, you know, with a combo ender as Gold Lewis. It's very, very good. Here, I probably wouldn't need to, but I can anyway. I get a little bit of extra distance and meter for doing so. 
right? If I'm at a further spacing when I go for that combo, it might not work. And again, it just happens constantly. So you really want to be aware of how to do this. And the trick is, once you're done with your 1080 motion, the, bu the input gets stored, right? The buffer gets stored, if you will. So you can see I totally let go. I stopped churning for a little bit there. Watch my control stick in the middle of the screen. 1080, release, dash P. I still get my 1080. The buffer gets stored, okay? Now, the way I recommend you do this, first off, always churn 4268, 4268, right? Starting back and going in a counterclockwise motion. I think that this is the easiest for every single controller. I've played on all controllers with Gold Lewis. I think it's universally the best. Second off, there's the way of doing your run 1080 on both sides. I do it in a weird way. So I do my 1080, and then if I'm facing this side, I'll do an extra 426, and then I'll dash and P. And I'll often dash with that 6, uh, you know, at the same time. And I think that that just kind of helps me personally, but it is an extra input. If I'm on this side, I'll just do an extra 4. I'll go from 8 to 4 and then dash. Right. Those work, but you actually don't need to do it. You can just do your 1080, go neutral, and then dash and P. That'll work. Now, that's the way I do it, but I think that there's a more optimal way that I'm trying to implement. Shoutouts to Alex slash Greasy Cletus for this one. And that would be 720, 426, neutral, dash, 8P. So you do two churns, and then 426, neutral, dash, 8 and P. And that will allow you to keep your buffer for a very long time. See that? I went real deep with that one. <laughs> and it also means you don't really need to do an extra churn like I do, if you will, or an extra half churn. Very, very good stuff, so I recommend practicing this. See it? Does everyone understand? That's kind of the way that I'm doing it. Uh, same kind of thing on this side, right? It's the exact same motion. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what side you're facing. It works both ways. 360 is symmetrical, unsurprisingly. Okay. So that's something I kind of recommend getting down. Another very important form of buffer storing for Gold Lewis is what's called runnings. So let's say Kai FDs at close slash 268. I want to threaten my overhead here, but I can't. It doesn't reach. Now, if I want to and run up and do this overhead, well, it starts with an 8. And Gold Lewis has 5 frame jump squat, which means that I have 5 frames to do this semicircle cleanly. That is immensely difficult to do without jumping. It does depend on controller type. They are certainly not all equal this way, but generally being fully consistent with 862 and 842 standing without any buffer assistance, that's called a raw in Gold Lewis nomenclature, is extremely difficult. It is one of the highest execution things that you can do in this game, absolutely, if you want to do it consistently on both sides on demand without ever messing up. Very, 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 very difficult. So naturally you want an easier way to threaten the overhead here. Well, Thankfully, there is. This is called a running, like I said. And the way that this works is that we use the recovery of a move to start our behemoth, and we store that began part of the behemoth. We store that part, and then we dash and finish the behemoth. And this game is actually pretty generous on buffer storage, thankfully. And so the way that I like to do it on every controller, not just hitbox, which is what I'm on, is to do like recovery, during the recovery of whatever move, I'm just using 2P as an example because it's our lowest recovery move. You do a quarter circle, up forward or up back, depending on if you want 862 or 842. And then you go to neutral and press dash. And then when you want to do the behemoth, you go to down and press H. Now I can't go infinite distance, right? I can't go over here and then get my running. But if you get good with it, you can go pretty deep. And of course, you can do a running into a running. And that's really good, because that behemoth is plus 12. The opponent has to worry about a million different things there, not the least of which is another overhead. Which, by the way, if they try jumping and blocking in the air, you get a huge pressure extension. Because you're giga plus if they get caught in the air with a behemoth because of landing recovery on top of your guard crush frames. That basically gives you another, uh, gives you another plus 19 for free. Which allows you to do some ridiculous extensions, but th that's beside the point. So the way that you do the runnings, like I said, during recovery... Quarter circle up back or quarter circle up forward. Neutral, dash, down, H. You have to be kind of fast on this. And again, you cannot go forever in terms of distance on this. You can't go as far as you want. So you have to get a feel for how far you can go. But the good thing is, 
You can do this off of any recovery. It doesn't have to be off of any button in particular. I'm staggering off my minus 12 move with an overhead. Or with a low. It's kind of funny. The timing on this one's sort of weird because the recovery is so high on far slash, but that's just one example, right? Another good spot that you can go for this, and people don't do enough, JS, even if it whiffs, running 816, you get another overhead. Running 842, you get a low. In the air, they're going to be super negative because of landing recovery on this, and you can often true string into that running. And it's very hard to see and react to. Now, this is called the Thug Shaker Mind Control, if you will. Another kind of Gold Lewis community nomenclature. That's just doing running 862s in the middle of your pressure. And this is something that is very hard to deal with again because you're plus 12. You have so many different options you can threaten for here. You can just do a like a dash far slash and frame trap and get a huge combo. 2S, you can pull a drone. You can do other behemoths. There's a million different things. You can gaplessly do another behemoth and you can RC and mix. Like the opponent has so many things to look out for. An instant overhead, not the least of which. And if the opponent air blocks, they get blown up. Because you can just do a million behemoths since the opponent gave you another free plus 19 essentially because of land recovery. But yeah, that's the runnings. And they're very, very useful in pressure and on knockdown. This is kind of a mix up. You can make this meaty if you do it properly. It's not that easy to be 100% consistently meaty and also be unbackdashable. If you want to be unbackdashable, 268, that'll call out backdash there. It's a pretty good option. But this is something that's quite hard to see. You can also threaten like with you know, with 2P run up 5k. Because 5k has so many active frames. It's, it's you know 9 active frames which is ridiculous. And the opponent gets kind of juggled a little bit. If they get caught in the air backdashing it. So also really really good. But yeah that covers runnings and buffer storing. Let's move right along. Now let's talk about clash cancelling for a second here. So because the BTs are all disjointed, on the behemoth at least, there will be a lot of situations where they clash with other buttons or sometimes with DPs, for example. Right there. And you really want to be ready for it. I would say universally after you do a BT in any spot where you think there could be a clash cancel, always just instinctively press FD. Or at the very least, just clash cancel into FD as soon as you possibly can. Gold Lewis at these ranges, his options are worse than the average for sure. So most other characters have an option that is significantly better than yours, even if you factor in the reward that you're getting at these ranges, I would say. And so you just want to be aware of when you can clash cancel and the importance of that. That's something that is is pretty big, particularly if you're, you know, meeting with, with these kind of things, or if you're doing space 268s and whatnot. I will say... Um, this specific situation, like far slash clashing or far slash BT clashing with DPs, this is kind of soul specific. With every other character, if you're not super spaced, far slash will punish you actually because it's negative 12. It blows ass. Terrible button, by the way. But um, I, nonetheless, it's a spot where against soul you can be ready to, be, to DP. Against some supers, behemoths can DP if you're doing far meaties with them on the first frames. And of course, as well. Depending on spacing, other behemoths can clash with other DPs. So those are kind of the important things to be aware of. This character, also a situation that pops up a lot of the time, if you try to approach with a super dash, J268. This is very 6 people on React. But it's the perfect spacing, perfect spacing vertically, to clash with most 6Ps. And if you do that, you can clash cancel into another uh, J268. That will typically beat 6Ps, which is kind of funny. Uh, and you can get a big combo because it'll counter hit. But if they clash cancel into a 6P again themselves, you'll get hit. But uh, it's 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 funny stuff. It's another spot where it will pop up fairly often. There are also kind of setups for it as well. So this is a setup on Leo, for example. You delay that 2D to catch them pressing up to try to DP after close slash or fuzzy DP or whatever. That will hit. And you can also do a delay 624 if they didn't get hit by the 2D, you can do that on reaction. And that will clash with DP as well, if you're ready. You know, that's kind of a setup. And especially if you're spaced, like the opponent is FDing and then trying to DP right after. A lot of the time off of various normals into a BT, you're going to be able to clash cancel there. So 
So you can kind of get these meme punishes sometimes as well if you clash cancel directly into a behemoth. This is like the old list player's dream. It's hilarious. And uh, it feels really good if you actually do hit it. By the way, shout out to running 1080 tech from before. But anyway, uh, it just goes to show it's something that is pretty important to be aware of. Again, the situations where you really want to be looking out for this are if the opponent is FDing your normals and then trying to DP afterward. If that's not happening and they're not FDing, most of the time DPs are going to hit you out of whatever you're canceling into, especially if it's not 684 or 624, which is essentially a hard call out, or you're going to get punished on whatever button that you were trying to do. Like even if you just do nothing on block, which yeah, that's a big drawback for Gold Lewis, but thankfully the risk reward is definitely a factor. We get a great DP punish. And so, yeah, it's kind of all I wanted to say about clash canceling, but those are important things to keep in mind with him. Here's a funny situation I wanted to include as well, right? He's coming out of guard crush, which means you have no throw in bone, right? You have no throw protection coming out of guard crush. You're in a Street Fighter-esque scenario in this game. Uh, normally you have five frames off BTs or guard crushes, you don't. And that applies in the air as well, which means you can get people with this dirty, dirty PRC into, into air throw. Like if you ever catch the opponent blocking a behemoth in the air and you and you uh, RC anyway, it's it's hilarious. And it's like, the, I'd say this has at least a 95% success rate. It's kind of funny, but I just wanted to throw that in there as well. Let's talk quickly about some important option selects on Gold Lewis. First off, I'll talk about Super OS. So let's go ahead and set Leo to after recovery. We'll have him do SDP. We'll do the frame kill from earlier. And you can see he DP'd which I would have blocked because I did a, a safe jump, but I supered him and punished his DP. Curious. Well, what if I have him backdash? Because of course you can in fact backdash this safe jump and it won't hit you, right? I'll just show that real quick. Does not hit. Does hit. Curious. So what's nice about this, the OS here is it's a hit stop OS, which means because of the extra time spent if the opponent gets hit by GD or if they block it, the input for super won't come out. Like the game will just pretend that input didn't exist. But if you input it when the GD would hit and they don't get hit, the super does come out, which means that you'll punish DPs and you'll punish backdashes on safe jumps. And that is very, very good and important to do. Because again, it kind of eliminates that RPS, that super annoying situation you have to deal with with Gold Lewis, which is opponents execution checking you on OS's on your safe jumps. Because there are other ways to OS, right? I have him set to backdash here. And I can just straight up punish it. Especially in the corner, right? I just hold back for like an extra second. And uh, then I press slash immediately. And if they block, then I'll just get JD close slash. If they backdash, my close slash will punish them. But mid-screen, to do this properly every time, it's not so hard off a throw, right? But mid-screen, to do this properly, consistently, not too easy to actually make this a punish every time. And also to block reversals. It is fairly not bad off a throw. This depends on character. Again, against characters with really good backdashes like Bridget, you have to 5p to option select their backdash. Close slash will not work. You'll get a far slash and it won't punish them, right? And that or you'll be, you know, it won't actually be a safe jump. You won't be able to, to block reversals. In order to actually do it properly in those cases, you typically have to 5P and to confirm the 5P on React, like I said earlier, not that feasible. And of course, TKBRC from before. This is also an OS of sorts. Shoutouts to Run Tay from before, by the way. So... You know, those are all forms of option selects, I would say, on safe jumps and important to do. Another one that works. 2k. It's pretty good to OS with crouching moves, I would say, because you can hold down back while you're doing them. You know, that, that's kind of nice. You can try 2s as well sometimes, too. But, I mean, that won't punish most of the time. It's just, it's kind of there. Anyway, 
Uh, that would be the safe jump OS's with this character. There's another OS you can do off safe jump, by the way. Let's have him go back to DP. Through him. This is a hit stop OS specific to calling out DPs. You will throw them out of DP by doing this. You do not need resources to OS a DP with this character. But of course, if we switch him back to option two and I do that exact same input, I just get a whiff throw and I'm minus 27. So very, very punishable there. So you have to be careful doing this kind of thing. It's not bad to keep in mind from time to time though against the absolute bots that will try to do this constantly, especially with Leo. Uh, the other thing that makes this kind of thing challenging is that again, all the variable knockdowns to always make sure you're safe jumping in a Westing correctly is difficult just to reiterate from before. Now let's talk about a, another OS kind of in the same umbrella as hit stop OS's as well. See that? On every counter hit, I'm getting a 486, which is optimal off counter hit far slash. And on every normal hit, I'm getting a 684. How am I doing this? I'm abusing hit stop OS. So with your pokes, this is something that's generally really good to do. Really, this only applies to close slash, or rather far slash, and 2S. But it's kind of valuable to do uh, all the time when you're throwing out those buttons, especially in neutral when you might be scoring counter hits. So what I'm doing is I'm inputting a 684 and then a 486 after any S button that I'm throwing out in neutral, 2S or, or far slash, right? And on normal hit, I'm getting 684. On counter hit, I'm getting 486. Very optimal, by the way. A 684 and then a 486 right after my 684 to kind of override my 684 input because that's the way counter hit slowdown works in this game in order for people to be able to adjust their combos. Uh, but it's it's really difficult to actually react to hit confirm your far slash or rea and react to counter hit and get the optimal confirm at the same time just because they're semicircles. It takes a lot longer than a quarter circle. With other specials, believe me, as someone who's played several different characters for quite a while, it's way easier to do on reaction with other characters. Like with Geo, it's totally free to do like normal hit 5H 214S versus 214H on reaction. Very, very easy. But on this character, that's definitely not the case because it takes a lot longer to input, um, you know, half circles than it does to do quarter circles. So that's kind of the motivation behind doing this tech. Now, if you're in the corner, I would recommend doing 426 instead because, of course, um, on counter hit uh, S button, you get a 426 wall bounce. Unfortunately, that does not work. On far slash, this will work at most spacings, and of course on 2s it will work if I'm closer. But like far slash, even here it'll still work. So, you know, that OS is really good to do in the corner, just 684426 instead. See how I did that? Look at my input history. I just did S, 684H, and 426H. So, now this is something you should be doing pretty much all the time when you think you might score a counter hit. If you're getting, you know, really good practices, really good habits, you should actually just do it every time unless you want to try staggering off far slash. Something else to note about him, even if you don't do your optimal counter hit confirms, as long as you know the right combos with Gold Lewis, you can still get a lot of value off your counter hits. It's just important to do the combos properly. So big boy damage there off of my counter hit, right? But of course, I can also spend no meter, right? And uh, damage difference is not really there, of course, for uh, not spending resources. That is something that is very, very solid, especially because you're going to be building to 50 after that initial hit during the full combo so, so often when you get a counter hit starter. That's why it makes a huge difference to be hitting your counter hit confirms with this character rather than just getting complacent. It can just absolutely push your reward to the to the max, you know way way boost your ability to pressure with this character so yeah i'd say that's something that's important to to implement now we did just touch on this a little bit there with that conversion but we're going to be talking a little bit about combo optimization now this isn't really so much a piece of tech as it is something that's important to know and also a big issue i see with gold lewis's the general principle is you want 426 as early as possible into the combo you want to try to frc straight into 426 if you can a lot of the time like this and now off of a basic BMB, right? Just 
far slash 684. Basic confirmed. Big boy damage. Big, big boy damage. And of course, if you get a raw BT, even more damage. And because you're FRCing here, you build meter back. No, it's, it's, it's meter efficient. And so you can build the super again a lot of the time. And you just get so much damage if you're doing things optimally. Now that's important to, to be aware of, right? Another important spot, counter hit 268. You always want to be confirming this into a 426 immediately. This is how you get massive, massive damage off a of 268 compared to more traditional combos. 862 counter hit as well. Generally, you can close slash confirm this. You get a burst bait opportunity there as well with the JH that is uh, pretty good. And that's more or less optimal as well, by the way. So off of like a counter hit close slash starter, optimal punish a lot of the time is going to be something like this. And this is massive damage, right? It's stupid dummy damage. Because, like a monkey, this Leo DP'd with half risk and died. But, I mean, to get that exact starter, which is kind of the optimal close slash counter hit starter. You want no run momentum, and you also want to do, like, a slight delay 268 here, I would say. And make sure you don't Kara. That's how you get this 426 to wall bounce. And there are other situations where you'll get pop-ups like this, where you can go straight into a 426. So, for example... Big damage, even from a mid screen, right? There are a lot of situations where you can extend with FRC 426 where you wouldn't think the range would permit it. Yet it does. It's just important to, to dash, and it can be hard to see when you can close slash pick up there, by the way. But it's still really, really good. You know, that's why, as well, something else that's important as part of optimization, I'm just going to mention this. Again, check the optimization guide for more elaboration. Picking up with 2H is going to be better a lot of the time. 2H 486, and then 26A or JD. You can do JD IED super if it's not too highly prorated of a combo so that the JD doesn't hit. If it does hit, you get that. Or you can do 268 into run super, you know, uh, both really, really good. So like, let's just show an example of that. Right? Very, very good. And another general principle about combo optimization with Gold Lewis. You want to be doing as many low-scale behemoths as you can. Like, if you can do a combo where behemoth into behemoth into behemoth is possible, that's what you want to be going for. That's why when we do the 268 combo, we just go straight into 426. It's the best of both worlds. We get the 426 wall bounce as early as possible, and we also get behemoth into behemoth into behemoth. Echoing that principle, there's a way to get even more here. That's like max damage on 268 without gun, but uh, it's, you know, a little impractical, a little bit hard to get a lot of the time because it's, it's very spacing dependent. But yeah, now a situation I recommend you lab is definitely confirming uh, raw BTs. Generally, I recommend this combo for that. It is the most consistent and not too hard to execute. So I recommend you lab this by setting your position reset to mid-range and having the bot do bot, uh, have them do random counter hit and random uh, blocking. And then what you do is you just reset, confirm this on counter hit and normal hit, especially with the FRC for meter efficiency, and do nothing on block. It's very doable. Very, very doable. You just have to be cognizant and aware. And generally, you want to get good at always looking for this when you're near the corner, when you're throwing out raw BTs in neutral. Even around like like this spacing, if you're throwing out like a raw 684, you can actually manage to, to get a 4 6 wall bounce a lot of the time. It's just hard to get that close slash pickup in those cases. But yeah, those are some important principles for optimizing combos. So another spot where a lot of damage is left on the table is going to be counter hit aerials. Let's start with counter hit JS, air to air. Very easy to confirm. Air dash 268 into land close slash is the way it used to be air dash 862. Since air BT change in season 3, that is no longer the case. Now I would say 268 is more consistent. 
Maybe we'll just keep the combo simple here. But yeah, uh, huge damage from that. That's a lot better than just doing this, you know, which I see all the time. Or just like people messing shit up. Or like this. Yeah, no. No, no, no. I don't want to see that. Certainly you can get much more optimal than that. Now let's have him not jump. Let's just have him stand for a second. What about counter hit JD? Air dash, JK, and J248. And you can get easy wall breaks off of that. Easy, easy big boy damage as well. And if you really want to be lazy, you can even do JD into JD close slash. That works as well. And uh, if you're in the corner, say you get a fuzzy jump, you can also do this. Damage optimal out. And saucy. And guts destroyer. That's important to know for a side switch. Something else that's important, if you want to end your mid-screen punishes with a side switch, 5k248 slash car248 or 2k248 is the way to go. This is a bit spacing dependent and requires some awareness. You can also do this kind of thing off of beam and whatnot. Here and there, you can kind of find these really um, sort of high gravity fast fall combos for, that are highly prorated and catch with a, a low 248 with either 2k or 5k or sometimes even close slash will work as well so that's pretty important and something that is worth implementing to end inside switches when you can one other thing about combo optimization that i wanted to talk about is if the opponent has risk and they're kind of low so guts kick in and they're not going to get burst back. It's kind of rare when all of those are true, to be honest. But it's also saucy, so just go for it anyway. Gun combos. So, generally you want to route into gun as early as possible. And it will be way more damage if the opponent has risk than any other route. Like, just watch this. Baby combo, by the way. So easy to do. Baby, baby, little Timmy, one, two, three combo. We just TOD Leo with room to spare. A 50 risk, but if he DPs, this is very practical. It's like Build a Bear TODs. <laughs> it's really, really funny. So much damage. So, so much damage to get the gun early on in the combo. The basic reason for that is that gun sort of counts as one move. And so for whatever reason, it will eat like a preset amount of risk, and it will also only scale the combo by, by one move's worth of damage. It used to not scale it at all, by the way, which was hilarious. You could actually do dummy damage with this. But, I mean, it just means that you can get so much damage. So much damage by routing into gun when the opponent has risk. This is something that is really, really worth understanding. Very much good to go for. Another thing that pops up... You can convert from gun, actually, directly. <laughs> it's kind of funny. This, this doesn't pop up that often, but it pops up sometimes. And uh, a lot of the time, you might end a combo in gun, but you can still, uh, like, RC and do a BT to wall splat and another BT, and you'll get way more damage than you would think. Gun is just very, very damage optimal, but the downside is it builds so much burst back for the opponent, but I, I had to mention that. I had to. Let's turn to meter efficiency, a huge umbrella topic, but I'm going to cover the basics. Again, more in the optimization guide on this. But basically, we really want to have meter on gold lists, and we want to maximize the amount of time we can extend pressure on the opponent. And the way we do that is by abusing the system mechanics. So if you fast RC, the amount of time it takes you to start generating meter again at a regular pace compared to if you don't fast RC is a lot less. And that also depends on the type of RC. Fast Blue RC is by far the best for that. It has the shortest meter penalty by a huge, huge margin. So let's just make sure that Leo isn't being an ape here and DPing me after block. He is ape. <laughs> and let's go ahead and turn off FD. And you know what? Let's start off with about, we'll say 60 tension. 
pretty realistic to be in this spot. Something kind of simple like that. I just cooked that one up off the top of my head. And guess what happened? He took 95% in chip, I think. That entire sequence was all either gapless or frame traps. There was nothing greedy about that. A character with no meter and no reversal and no burst would have had to hold all of that guaranteed. All of it. Or they get hit and die at any point during that, right? And Risk is cranking during that too, by the way. Something that I didn't quite factor in if you get hit. Now let's do this sequence again with some minor alterations and let's see if you can notice it. Oh, he died. Wait, I still had meter. I could have kept going. Maybe I could have kept looping it. Hmm, interesting. The point is, I got greedy. Just a little bit greedy at one of those points. And I ran up for another close slash. Right here. After one of these. I ran up. And I got my other close slash. Right here, I ran in. So greedy. So seeable. Actually, no. That's very easy to get away with this. And the opponent might even get counter hit because they're flustered in this situation. And, uh, yeah, if that happens, you're going to be able to extend this forever. Like, you get greedy at all at any point during the sequence compared to the first one, and you can do a dummy, dummy amount of pressure extension. Now, to be aware and to be clear, this setup is weak to meter and weak to deflect shield and weak to burst. But, I mean, you put so much pressure on the opponent. It's just so good to do because of the amount of, uh, amount of meter that you keep. And like, compared to what else are you going to do exactly? Like this? Threaten a running high-low and some plus frames? Then your meter penalty? You're not going to be able to extend unless you open them up or get a hit and then get another whole turn going after that where you will probably have to get a greed option in just to have the opportunity to spend more meter? No. FRC drone for meter efficiency is stupid, stupid broken in the corner. And I don't understand why I'm not seeing this more. It is dummy broken. And it's 100% endorsed and recommended by me okay do this it's dumb now the other thing to keep in mind is frc's into pt's is really good a lot of the time though you want to red rc if you're going to uh, rc into 486 otherwise this won't be gapless and the opponent can backdash or reversal and strong opponents against gold Lewis will learn to react backdash in that situation it is absolutely feasible with enough time against the character and with how common that pressure reset is in particular now of course you can also do frc um FRC 842 is good. It is, of course, plus 16, which gives you plenty of time to run up and get another close slash going and start building meter again. That's really good. So this is the low low. You get that one because my name and it's a, it's a low. But anyway, uh, Fast Blue RC has the shortest meter penalty timer, which means there's not much time between when you spend it and when you start building meter again at a normal pace. You can see like already on that second hit, Oh, guess what? I'm back to 50. And what we know from before, you can, of course, do this. I'm going to get greedy once, run up close slash. I'm getting greedy again, 2k268. And I'm in there, I'm in there, I'm in there, I'm in there. I'm getting so much meter back. Like, look again at his HP. It's It's crazy. Now, the situations where you want to be looking for these kinds of things, generally, if the opponent wire sees you and they don't have resources and they're not a reversal character, burst them guaranteed into the corner. You can't burst on React to YRC, and meter regen penalty on YRC is massive. It's like a death sentence to, to YRC Gold Lewis in the corner if you know how to checkmate with these kinds of drone loops and whatnot afterward. So make sure to be bursting those YRCs right, right back into the corner and taking advantage of it as well. Lilo Lo has its own merits, of course. You can see it's quite plus. And 842 is normally only plus three. 
And yet, if we do the low low, it is plus 12, which is very, very, very good, needless to say. Now, not only that, this is anti-fuzzy. It automatically will catch fuzzy jump and fuzzy backdash because of the manual delay here on the 248 compared to when you would 248 normally. It's not exactly a gapless string, but the BRC makes it gapless in the sense that if the opponent tries to press or DP, they'll get hit, but there's an extra delay. Like it extends the block stun essentially is what that BRC is doing is how you should think of it. And the opponent has no way of seeing or knowing that or reacting to it, okay? That's what makes it so, so strong. And of course the opponent has to block that low. If they try anything on a fuzzy timing window, which a ton of people do against Gold Lewis because they're bots and don't understand the character, they will die. Because look what you get. Normally on 248, that's all you really get. Fast blue RC though. What do we get? I'm just gonna keep it simple for the sake of showing. But yeah, huge reward, huge reward. And uh, this one scales very nicely with risk as well. Of course, he still sets his 50 risk before you go on your Yammerin, calling gold this broken, uh, which he is. But you, know, you can also do this kind of thing. And just OTG if you want to kill. Uh, that's, you know, that's going to get you a lot of damage. Alternatively, of course. Wall break. And that does a lot of damage. It's a BT starter. And you're getting that combo every time. I mean, not that combo because the amount of risk, but rather not that damage but that exact route you are getting every time guaranteed and it pulls them off the wall uh, with that one hit pulls them away from the wall so you don't have to worry about premature splatting i think it's really good now aside from the low low there's also of course the low high that would be the same thing but with 862 the trick here in order to make this really good so that you're able to get the fuzzy like we mentioned earlier first off fd confirm if they're not fd you cannot get the fuzzy but second off, you need to do your BRC basically as fast as possible, your FBRC from the close slash. Otherwise, there's going to be a gap here, and that is not something that you want, if possible. So you need to get in the habit of doing FBRC as fast as possible. That will also give you the most meter efficiency as well, okay? And what's so good about this FBRC 862, normally on 862, you get no combo, but FBRC, full combo. And again, keeping it simple here for the sake of showing it, but yeah, uh, a stupid, very stupid amount of damage you can get off this. And that's your mid screen confirm, just 2p684. Not bad damage, to be honest, off of that, because a lot of the time the opponent won't block it. And the idea here is to set them up for the low low or use the low low to set up the low high. They kind of go into one another. And uh, I think it's really good because if the opponent blocks it, you have an insane opportunity to extend pressure and get your resources back and just place a lot of mental stack on the opponent as well. And that's not even talking about using any of Gold Lewis's like throw game. We haven't gotten into that at all, but of course, like at any time, you could just say, hey, I'm going to throw this fella. And you get your safe jump or, or whatever. Get in there. Get some more pressure going, just meet each say if they have no reversal, OTG pressure, drone, all that stuff we've already been over, it all interplays. Then once you're in with drone, build meter, do meter efficient mix-ups, loop them, checkmate them, they'll YRC, you burst, FRC drone. You can kind of see how everything morphs together, and it's just beautiful. This character is just beautiful. Okay, but I'm just a huge fan of meter optimization and doing meter positive, meter neutral long-term pressure extensions and that's where fast blue rc comes in okay there's a lot of different ways to do it as well but it's kind of something that is not the easiest in order to do like i think you can set this to be gapless for example but you have to hit the brc like frame one and to do that and not get a red rc at the same time that's a little bit tricky okay not gonna lie it's not the easiest thing in the world to be doing these and being cognizant all the time and sometimes the opponent is not going to know how to deal with this running you know 842 and they're going to get hit by it and you're going to get your full combo and that's going to be worth it you won't need to do this kind of thing but i think optimal gold lewis this is the kind of thing we're going to need to be seeing a lot more of by the way mix everything together you know fuzzy overhead raws uh which we haven't actually gotten into yet but we will you know tkbrc it's just oh chef's kiss i love it but yeah, hopefully that gives you some idea of how to optimize Gold Lewis both in pressure and on hit. Again, optimization guide is linked below. Check it out if you want more. It's still relatively up to date. But we'll move on to kind of some more niche topics now, shall we say.
That's the big stuff, but stick around. There's cool stuff here. Check that out. I am canceling my landing recovery straight into a behemoth. This is actually tech, because look what happens if I just try to do like a landing behemoth, like... See how much slower that is? Look at that. I am buffering it, so it's coming out as fast as possible compared to this. See how it's coming out instantly? That's a land cancel. So I'm using a frame kill, which is at the apex of your super jump, air dash JH, and then J248. Then when you land, input a behemoth. And you actually can cancel your landing recovery straight into a special. Into drone for memes. <laughs> Or if they FD. This piece of tech goes extremely in depth. And there are multiple setups off of it. You can also do it off of IEDJD. But I mean, this is kind of niche because you need it to hit like as high as possible. Which is, it's not rare that that will happen properly. And it, it gets messed up by crouching, that kind of thing. But there are other frame kills that you can, you can set up. For example, if you do like a slight manual delay JH, you can also set it up. You actually are able to OS backdashes with this. Very, very nice stuff. The 248 will automatically OS backdash for you if you do the land cancel. Now, there's a whole separate video on this. It gets very in-depth, um, everything to know about land cancels. The TLDR is you can set it up off throws. You do the frame kill with super jump. As soon as you get to the apex, IADJH, J248, land and do a special. That's how you do it. But there's a lot you have to know in terms of counterplay that the opponent has, in terms of what options they're picking while you're looking at them as you do the land cancel, i.e. if they FD, if they DS, what they FD, where they DS, where they FD, what options they have if they're a reversal character, yada yada, etc, etc, backdash, timings, all that kind of thing, what BTs to land cancel, what BTs to do outside of J248, tons and tons of stuff. I highly, highly recommend you check out the video on this one because this piece of tech is super sick. You can do some crazy, crazy stuff with it. So yeah. Now it's finally time to talk about Raws. So we earlier talked about how 862 and 842, these BTs, they are hard to do standing because there is five frame jump squat on Gold Lewis. It means you'd have to do those BTs in five frames or fewer, which is very, very difficult, but not impossible. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's possible. Okay, I sugarcoated it a little bit, but I got a good streak going there. <laughs> oh, and 842s. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. 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 Okay, I sugarcoated it, but you get the point. Uh, it's very, very doable, and if you're able to do these on demand, that's really good because you can threaten meeting with an overhead. And by the way, if this overhead hits on its last few active frames, you can react. And if they're not FDing, you can go for a meterless fuzzy. That is something that is very, very good to be aware of because this is, of course, minus 12. But if it's meaty, sometimes you can get it to be better than that. Let's have Leo stop backdashing here and see if I can get it. Right there. Boom. I actually got that first try, damn. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can actually react and see if the opponent is FDing and if they're close enough and you can get a fuzzy overhead. Also works, by the way, on MIDI 486. And this one's guaranteed um, if they don't FD. If I actually am not a bot and do my JK as fast as possible. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, uh, raws are super good because you're meeting with a minimum plus 12 BT in 862. That is also an overhead. That is kind of hard to see on its own. I think this will usually hit crouchers around like frame, I don't know, 22, 23-ish, something around that line. So that's kind of how long they have to react to stand, which is certainly reactable, but Goldless has a ton of mental stack. And if you're doing this as they're waking up, especially because it's unexpected since this is so hard to do, nobody represents it outside of Goldless's that have grinded this, or if they're really believers in Ross, which I am, <laughs> of course. Um... Yeah, it, it works like all the time. And if you hit a raw 842, of course you get a combo, right? Let's go ahead and show that. Mid screen, you get a little something something too. You get that 2K26H, just a little mini combo. So yeah, raw 842 is really nice. And actually, if you hit like last frame meaty with raw 862, you can confirm into 2P684. That's really hard to do though, I'm not gonna lie. I think I've done that like twice ever. 
But yeah, raws are so, so good because you're meeting with a plus 16 low or a plus 12 minimum overhead that are both not the, not the freest reaction. I mean, I am not kidding when I say you can 100% get to a point where you're backdashing raws on reaction if the opposing gold list is representing that on wake up or like as a media option, I should say. But like, it's just not easy by any means. And anyone who hasn't played a ton of gold with this is not going to be at that point. And that's also like rung 15 on the counterplay ladder. There's so much other stuff to be aware of before that. But anyway, raws are so, so good because of that, I would say. And like 268, which is your go-to meaty, this is minimum plus six and going to be up to maximum like plus 14. So like at worst, you're basically getting like a super meaty 268. The spacing could be a little worse on, on 862 if it's FD'd. But 842, even if you're FD'd out, it's so plus that you can run up and close slash like all the time. And so really, really good. The other thing that's worth noting about the Raws, they're excellent anti-airs. They reach so, so high. And if you get this, you can like pick up and get a combo. Darkrai actually did this to Amelia at EVO in 2022 and it was like career like career ending multiple times it happened in the set and i felt really bad for that milia but yeah that's why raws are so good because if you have them on lock and you can anti with them they are fantastic anti because they're disjointed this is like a giant swinging rotating 6p is the way to think of it like it's crazy it's crazy how high they reach they'll hit like everything and they're really really good by the way 248 also really good for this but it doesn't start above you that's what makes these such good anti airs okay so I'm very much a raw believer, and I just wanted to throw it in there. I had to. Now, again, this heavily, heavily depends on your controller, how easy it is to do raws. They can be made consistent on every controller, though. I will say that much. I would say, in my opinion, pad is the best, followed by hitbox and then stick. And I would say Mixbox style controllers, keyboard WASD, is probably the worst for doing RAWs. Not necessary tech by any means, but definitely very, very good and super saucy. If a gold loose is doing this, you know they're hella nice, okay? I've lost like many a tournament set to doing this, and I have no regrets because I'm like, I'd rather be lost in the sauce than never find it. That's my approach to gold loose. And of course, I have to show cock inspection. I mean, this is a timeless classic on Gold Lewis. Just something you have to know how to do. And if you perform this on the opponent, uh, it's embarrassing. And that's why I really like it. And uh, yeah, RC right there. Uh, make sure to inspect properly, and that's sort of how you do that setup. But don't dash RC. It's kind of the secret there. Oh, and quick little side note here. This is kind of irrelevant, but if you hit a big body with a BRC, you can do this. You can get the, the 842 pick up there. And that's actually optimal against big bodies. Certain big bodies. It doesn't work against Nago, for example. But check this out. It's pretty lit, right? You can get some really cool stuff with Mr. Dickens in here. And that big body optimal, by the way, is uh, pretty damn important a lot of the time, I would say. Like mid-screen. It can let you get stuff same side as well, which is pretty important. And uh, it's good. That's actually optimal. It is legit optimal. So that's uh, one thing that I think is nice. Another niche scenario. I am at 49 meter. And yet, I was just able to super. So uh, that is a Kara super on Gold Lewis. Because all of his BTs are half circles, if you just press P and H simultaneously, when you end your 1080, you will get a Kara super and get just a tad bit more meter, which sometimes you actually need in order to finish a combo in a 1080. Huh, I got a 1080 off. It's pretty neat, right? It can definitely make a difference some of the time. Now, something else that is to be known about Kara Super. And this situation actually pops up more than you might think. Kara Laser. 
So I can do double quarter circle K for laser, right? But I'm not getting enough. But if I Kara a 426 on the second quarter circle forward, I'm basically using the last part of the semicircle in 426 as the second quarter circle on the beam. You can Kara laser. And you can get really fast with this, I think, you know? Like, uh, I haven't practiced this much, so I'm not the best at it, but like, you know, that's not bad. Like if you're at neutral over here where you would normally use laser, it's better than just running forward for the meter, I think. Like the, it's that amount of time compared to that amount of time. So I think it's good, you know, and you can do it on both sides, but on this side, it might take a little more effort, but yeah. Carabeam is pretty damn good, believe it or not. Like this, this pops up way more than you might think. But anyway, um, that's all I really wanted to cover in this one. I just thought I'd throw some extra stuff on at the end. Again, these are the building blocks for Goldwiss Tech. You can do so much with him. See the Rate the Tech video, for example. The Aurora Borealis Backbreaker, one of my personal favorites. Timeless classic, the Aurora Borealis Backbreaker. I mean, not timeless, it's relatively new. But it will be immortalized in history as uh, just just art, you know, kind of like the Mona Lisa. So, anyway, that's all for me, Golds. I hope you hope you like this one. Anyone who's new to playing Gold Lewis, please stick around. Check out the Gold Lewis Discord. It is in the description as always. Gold Lewis Gaming, one of the best communities on the internet, willing to play with anyone, any level, teach anyone anything, answer questions. You can find me there if you like. But yeah. That's it for me, Gorns, and we'll, we'll see you later.